the recall is, is, I mean, it's great in a mass tort because that's like almost an admission. Admit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're saying, yes, there's definitely something wrong with this. So that takes you past that whole liability stage of trying yeah. to prove the problem. They've admitted it. Yeah. So, so that's, those are kind of a home, so home run case. Even if recalls kind of exist, they, they don't, aren't admitted to. It's not defined as a recall because the, the company is never recalling it. They're never admitting, admitting that there's something wrong with it. Well, in in the cases where they don't recall it, yeah, yeah, the ca- yeah, then there's no admission. Once yeah. they recall, they're saying yes that there's we a- fucked up. There's it's this has gone down the shitter. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, they usually don't word it that way. No, they hardly That's ever. Honest. Prioritizing profits. Prioritizing prioritizing pro- dangerous drug and product cases. The whole idea behind drugs and medical devices so that you're making people's lives better. You're getting, you know, you're helping them with awful symptoms they have. You're, you're giving them their life back. If you're having a knee or hip replacement, you can, you know, get your mobility back, all of that. It's supposed to help. It's not supposed to hurt. And it's certainly not supposed to kill you. And if there are, even if there's risks with these things, okay, there's risks in life, but tell us about it. And, you know, and that's one of the things I, you know, people always say, oh, you know, these, these drug commercials, it's all blah, 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 this can happen and that can happen. And yeah, and fine, if you tell me that can happen to me, then I can make a decision. I can make an informed decision about whether I want to take that risk. And, and if I take that risk and the bad thing happens, I've got no case. That, that's fine. But if you don't tell me about some horrible situation that could happen, some horrible risk, then I haven't... I wasn't in a position to make an informed decision, and I should be able to be compensated if this awful risk I had no idea about occurs. There's been cases like this in the past that are so, you know, insane, and 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 so many people have been affected, and the pharmaceutical companies, they feel it in the settlement, but, you know, 10, 20 years down the line, they release something else that ends up doing the same thing or, you know, having more issues as well. They're sneakier. They're going to get away with it this time. Well, they got caught last time, but, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a big money-making money making business. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I, I was reading something just yesterday that kind of struck me. Um, it was just like this little reminder that, you know, the drug companies are in the business of making money for their shareholders. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what the business is. Most often when you go to the doctor, you're going to a primary care provider, mm-hmm. um, and, and they don't have time to be researching every single different area. I mean, you know, they're the, kind of like the, 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 first, the first level, um, and they absolutely are going to be the ones that it's hidden from. I mean, there was a, um, back in the, the, the days when we were pursuing the Actos cases, it was a, um, uh, a diabetes medication that was causing bladder cancer. And I mean, these drug reps were told, whatever you do, don't say that C word. Wow. Do not say the C word. And if you get asked about that C word, do whatever you have to do to distract. You know, we do not want them to know this. Again, if they know this, they're not going to prescribe it. And, 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 and you know, as you were saying, too, that, you know, this, this finding out about it post-market, there's actually a bigger investment at that point. If they find out early on in the development phase, you know, I mean, again, they oftentimes still put it out, but they lose less if they stop at that point. Mm-hmm. If they go forward and they spend billions and billions and billions of dollars on these marketing campaigns and producing this medication, they've really invested. And to pull it now, whew, that's a big loss. I say, you know, as, as all attorneys who are doing these types of cases, we have no interest in some crazy case that we cannot prove. And it's it's tough to prove these cases. So they are pretty solid before they get to this point where cases are filed and they're getting consolidated and, yeah. and you've get, you know, some of the, like the real big players involved in these. It's not um, you know, we have we have nothing to gain and everything to lose if it's not a viable case. Yeah. And and I think a lot of people kind of have this almost assumption that lawyers are kind of shooting in the dark, right? Like ah. looking for any type of case that could get them money, but that's not 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 it at all. Like well, the it might of- be, but those are the bankrupt <laughs> lawyers. I mean, True. those are the ones who don't survive because yeah. you know you can't lose hundreds of thousands of dollars t- over and over again. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And, and and just it's that's just not that not the case at all. And um, something that I kind of realized as well is, you know, when I was talking about, it, I was like, you know, this is getting consolidated. This is, <laughs> this is, this is happening. Sounds and so people, official. It, it does. And people are like, uh, okay, you know, what does that mean? But it, it, it does mean something, right? Like if a case is getting consolidated, there is definitely like enough kind of groundwork there. Every, you know, there's enough cases around the, the country. There's enough 
uh, law firms involved in it, that they see the potential, that they see there's wrongdoing, that everyone's kind of coming together and, and, and bringing the cases yeah. in one place. Yes. And the, the real the thing about consolidation is that the reason a case gets consolidated is because there are too many cases to handle individually. <laughs> that, that's a great explanation right there. Uh, there you go. <laughs> there's I literally mean, too many. There's too many. And in, in fact, the defendant, the manufacturer usually wants them consolidated too, mm -hmm. because, you know, maybe you have, you know, a hundred lawyers around the country, each with our own case or two or three cases, but that all of those cases, that same group of lawyers that the, that the manufacturers hired is dealing with all of those and they're running from state to state to state. So oftentimes the manufacturers say, yes, we want it consolidated. We recognize there are so many cases, it's going to be more efficient. It's going to make more sense for everybody to do this. So um, yeah, it's maybe a technical term, but it means that this is a really substantial size case. Yeah. Um, and there's enough of them that uh, the judge has agreed, yes, we're going to put these all together and, and fight them out, fight them out on, as a group. I think for people that are, are listening, they maybe had no idea what mass torts were before this, or they didn't know much about, about personal injury and pharmaceutical companies and the stuff that was kind of going on behind the scenes. I feel like this is probably a massive wake-up call. This is shocking. I wouldn't even believe it, right? I mean, <laughs> hearing that these these pharmaceutical reps are going to the doctors, going to my doctor's office, recommending medication that they know will cause cancer and are being told to hide it from doctors. I mean, this is like conspiracy theory, you know, all, <laughs> all the way up there to the top. They can put things in and they can also take things out, what we sometimes uh, call a silent recall. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually happened um, with the denture cream cases that had, had um, ex an excessive amount of zinc. And when you um, absorb zinc, your body can no longer absorb copper and it can lead to all sorts of problems, um, peripheral neuropathy, numbness. I mean, people were in wheelchairs as a result of this. And so when these cases started happening, they were like, oh, okay, well, we'll just start pulling the zinc out of the product, the new products don't have it. And then the people couldn't even prove their case, even though they were already suffering from the, uh, the side effects and the permanent injuries. Most products don't get recalled. Um, so it, back in the days of the, um, well, not, not that there aren't still some, but the artificial hip cases, the, the metal on metal, those were actually recalled. Um, but more. And that's on, in your body. I mean, that's that's the, the process of returning. That's <laughs> a lot more complicated. It, it's also easier to track down the people because they know exactly <laughs> who, who they <laughs> sliced into and implanted a, a hip into. Um, but more often than not, in these mass tort cases, the company is not acknowledging that there's a problem. They're, they deny all the way till the end. I mean, even when you settle the case, they'll say in the release, we are not admitting that there is any problem with our product. We still don't think there is, but as a, you know, in an effort to avoid litigation, blah, 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 we're going to pay you this money. So more often than not, there's not an actual recall. The recall is, is I mean, it's great in a mass tort because that's like almost an admission. Admit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're saying, yes, there's definitely something wrong with this. So that takes you past that whole liability stage of trying yeah. to prove the problem. They've admitted it. Yeah. So, so that's those are kind of a home, so home run case. Even if recalls kind of exist, they they don't aren't admitted to. It's not defined as a recall because the the company is never recalling it. They're never admitting admitting that there's something wrong with it. Well, in the, in the cases where they don't recall it, yeah, where, yeah, the, yeah, then there's no admission. Once yeah. they recall, they're saying yes that there's we really fucked up. There's it's this has gone down the shitter. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, they usually don't word it that way. No. They hardly That's, ever. Honestly, I would feel better if I was personally hurt by any other products and they're like, hey, look, guys, we, we dropped the ball. Okay. We shit the sheets a little <laughs> bit. Um, it's our bad, our fuck up. We got you. I'd, I would feel better from that, from that than like a very, you know, lawyer crafted statement. Yeah, well, definitely. Hey, yeah. we shit the sheets. Our bad. <laughs> hey, it's all right. <laughs> what do man. we owe you? What happens? We're going to compensate you fairly for yeah, what happened. Just tap them up. Hey, next yeah. time. Hey, well, I mean, I, I, I would hope and, and it would be great if more manufacturers took that position. <laughs> we can only uh, we can only keep our fingers crossed. And in the meantime, uh, as attorneys, we have to keep them on their toes and call them out on these things and, and prove that there's problems with them. Yeah. And with the air fryer, I mean, I guess anything with food recalls can be kind of scary, but you know, you mentioned the hips, how there's a recall. And then I, I know there's other devices or other, I, I think any type of recall where it's something that is in your body or you're putting in your body is even scarier than these type of, you know, your car is getting a recall called or your air fryer, your TV, something like that. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, some of them are like, you know, you, what I see a lot of, and I'm on that email list, so I kind of, I get these these notifications when anything's recalled. And like, you know, a gazillion times there's some food because there's undeclared tree nuts may be included or something like that. Um, I mean, which can be serious if you have an allergy. Yeah, um, come on. Who's, yeah, who's, you know. <laughs> Come on. All right, all right. <laughs> Tree nut allergy, a little overrated. Kind of a call for attention, in my opinion. I don't know. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, things get recalled that, that uh, in that, and in that actually, I mean, it, there's potential for a serious uh, issue there, but a lot of times it's not. It's just like, you know, they didn't disclose the accurate amount of something that's not dangerous. Um, so there are some pretty trivial recalls, but then there's some, some big ones. <laughs> The FDA is great. It's a good thing that we have the FDA. But what the FDA does and what people think the FDA does is dramatically different. Mm -hmm. People think that the FDA has all of these scientists and they're doing all of these studies and they're testing all of these products. And that's not the case. I mean, it's a government agency. Uh, they do not have the ability to do that. Um, what happens is that the drug companies do their own studies and then they submit the studies to the FDA uh, with, in the process of trying to get the product approved. Mm -hmm. um, are those studies biased? Well, hell yeah, a lot of the time. And they can pick and choose, right? They, I mean, they can really cherry pick these studies on which ones they want to send over to the FDA. Oh, yeah. And then they just stop studies sometimes. Oh, things aren't looking so good. Oh, well, we're, we're, we're not going to continue. First half's looking study. a lot better. I think we'll just <laughs> stick with this one. So acetaminophen, which basically is best known as Tylenol, um, has for a long time, certainly when I was pregnant, it's been the um, analgesic, the pain med of choice, f recommended by doctors for women when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. So we're always told, don't take aspirin, don't take ibuprofen. It can pose a risk to your child. But we were also told, Tylenol is fine, take Tylenol. And so people have always taken Tylenol. Um, and, and, and there are circumstances where even if there's a risk, it might make sense. For example, if you have like a horrendous fever that could affect your, your fetus, um, you need to get that fever down. And yeah. perhaps the Tylenol is going to be the best option to do that. But if you just have a headache here or there, or you have some aches and pains, again, you're not going to want to put your child at risk if you're told that there is a risk. Mm -hmm. And we were not. You know, there have been a lot of, of stories kind of over the years about people um, being very biased, perhaps bribed. Um, uh, there was a case I was involved in uh, years ago where it was determined that participants in the study who had died just were erased out of the study. So that as, if, as if they were never in it to start with. So there's some, some pretty extreme, uh, ex extreme situations that happen. Again, it's, it's, it's big dollars. If we can get this thing approved, we can get it on the market. Tylenol became, as of 1976, it was the absolute number one analgesic over the counter. Wow. Yeah. Boom. You know, and before that, it was, you know, the aspirin or yeah. ibuprofen. Um, so it just shot up there. And it's, you know, and again, you don't, <laughs> you don't know this, but, but when I was growing up, autism, I had never heard the word. I mean, I, you know, and, and kids in my, you know, elementary school, junior high school, I didn't know anybody who was autistic. Oh, really? Uh-uh. No. Wow. Absolutely not. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's, there. It, it just, the, the autism diagnoses just took off, like skyrocketed starting in around 1980. Yeah. So in fact, that from 1980 to 2018, the rate of autism increased by 4,400%. Jesus Christ. 4,400%. 4, 4, from 1980 till 19, till 2018. That is insane. Well, it's insane. And then also, whoa, when does, when does Tylenol become the big thing? 1976. And when do you start diagnosing children with autism? Around three years old, four years old. Around 1980. How crazy is That's that? That's insane.
One of the true highlights of my career were just the, the people who I could give them an answer. They, they, the doctors couldn't figure it out. Um, and we were like, hey, we'll do a heavy metal test. It's not a standard test. It's absolutely not a standard test. Um, and the doctors wouldn't even agree to it. Ah, a lawyer wants me to do this test. I'm not doing this test. <laughs> um, we actually ended up hiring a mobile lab who went to their homes and did the test. Wow. And if it came out that they had high levels of zinc and low levels of copper, wow, okay, it, there's a good chance that your problems are related to the denture cream you're using. I mean, who would have thought? This has been a big hot topic for years. Like, why, why, why are all these kids getting diagnosed with autism? I mean, yeah, four thousand percent. I feel like this is information that before the Tylenol thing came up, like that people were aware of that. And you look at that, and you look at those tests, and you're like, this is this cannot be normal. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what we're coming to. And but, but there's a lot of things that kind of have to, have to coalesce to, to to figure out a connection. And so one of the things there was, you know, this huge huge push maybe 10, 10, 15 years ago where they were really just talking about, could it be vaccines? Because vaccines had become yeah. much more common and there were so many more of them. Um, and there was a big push to, a lot of parents decided not to vaccinate their children because they were worried that that was a cause of autism. I remember there's this entire like social media propaganda thing where like vaccine causes autism. And it was like, I mean, kind of a joke. I think there was a South Park episode about it. These cases really came to light because there were young women um, who were not high risk for uterine cancer. And I should just step back and say uterine cancer is a very rare, rare cancer. Um, so you had young women, you had young women with no family history, no risk factors, and they were getting uterine cancer. And it's like, what, what's going on here? This, you know, something's going on here. Well, it turned out that there was a link to, um, to these products. And if they were using this over-the-counter hair straightener product on a regular basis, um, and it's the type of product you do use on a regular basis, as your hair grows out, um, you're going to reapply it. And these chemicals are getting absorbed into the scalp. And they're also very caustic. And so they could cause, you know, lesions and rashes and, and, and ways for that chem the chemical to get into your, into your scalp. You know, again, these women just assumed, well, this is just really horrible luck that I've got cancer at age 30 um, with no risk factor. Um, and it turns out that there was a reason. It was this product. Back in like uh, 1975, they there was a study that actually did confirm that acetaminophen crossed the placental barrier. Um, so it does it does actually get through. But then, yeah. but again, lots of things do. But once it crosses, does it cause a problem? Well, we don't know. But there were studies 2010, 2013, 2014, um, and and a lot of rat studies where they were having rats that were um, exposed to acetaminophen um, in utero, and they were coming out and they couldn't do the mazes like the other rats. Um, really? Yeah, and they were actually then then looking at their brains and finding out that there had been damage to the brain cells during development. Oh, my God. Right. So uh, <laughs> this has been going on for a really long time. Ultimately, in 2021, there was um, a journal published a consensus statement um, where a number of, of doctors and experts got together and said that Tylenol during pregnancy is not safe and it can lead to higher rates of autism. You know, there are various inside documents showing that they knew about these problems, but they were just making all this money on it and they just would not change it. And so the lawsuit started and there and they and, you know, when the jury saw these documents and saw, I mean, they were taking in certain circumstances. I mean, you know, these these huge bulk canisters of talc and it would have like the skull and crossbones oh on it. God. Oh, yeah. And they're pouring it into the product. I remember back in the 1980s, there were a couple of situations where um, Tylenol got recalled for a short period. Mm -hmm. There was, um, I just would turn about a couple of different people, crazy people who were tampering with Tylenol and yeah. putting cyanide in it. And so people bought Tylenol over the counter and they died of cyanide poisoning. And that was actually when the whole tamper-resistant um, uh, bottles came into existence. Because before that, people were like, oh, you just screw off the cap, no big deal. Who's yeah. going to go in and put cyanide in Tylenol or any medication and put it back on the shelf? But it happened. You know, it, it happened. Uh, this was actually the first time was in 1982. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Nobody's using Tylenol. I mean, it's yeah. all over the news. It's on the Today Show. Did they catch the guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering. So, um, and then, but then you look, and all of a sudden, following that, oh, there's a dip in autism. I mean, we wow. know this now, yeah. but at the time, okay, because now looking back, when we are suspicious, we can look back. Yeah. It happened again in 1986. Again, cyanide. 
Tylenol, That's recall, insane. dip in autism. I mean, holy shit. You know, my little rule of thumb has always been, you know, I don't really want something, unless there's no other option, I don't want something unless it's been out for about seven years. Um, you know, and again, some things are going to take a lot longer than that to develop. I mean, a lot of cancers and that sort of thing. Um, but you're going to see a lot in those, you know, in those initial years of, of potential problems. And hopefully, hopefully the drug company is being honest and updating as those things come out. You're going to know more than you knew at the beginning. So I'm not excited about brand new drugs. The primary message is that no matter where you are in the state, um, and no matter where you are in the country, if you fall under, you know, the case, then um, you can be represented. And maybe your case doesn't get filed in your home state, but uh, it maybe gets filed in, in, a, in a different state where it's consolidated, but you're still being represented. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and that's just, I mean, one of the questions I get asked the most is, you know, especially when we're on social media is, well, where are you located? And, and, and kind of going along with that as well, are you located where I am? And well, Probably not. <laughs> not with social media. I'm in Arizona, but um, we have cases all over the country, and it really doesn't matter where where you're located for these types of cases. If you're in a car accident, it does matter. And it's essential for these type of cases. I mean, like we just you know spent a while talking about Tylenol and autism. We would be incredibly limited if we are only able to take cases in from Tucson, because obviously this is a national issue that has affected hundreds of thousands, if not millions of family over the last, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, so it's essential that uh, mass stored attorneys are able to represent and take cases from all across the country. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Up until 2006, the formulas that were being produced, and that's Infamil and Similac, are all cow's milk. Jesus. And, yeah. And so, and now this disease is being directly connected to, to formulas with, with cow's milk specifically. Well, it's... It, there is a link. It, it is a baby who is premature and who is fed a cow's oh, milk okay. based formula mm -hmm. is dramatically more likely to develop this terrible NEC condition than breast milk. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, to get to get kind of crazier with it, um, th they've known the companies know that this is a problem, have known for a long time, and yet they advertise it as being safe. I, and, and real quick, though, I feel like I need to be kind of like the hold on a second guy here. I mean, they knew about it. They knew that this was causing this insane disease to premature babies uh, and, and just kind of went along. How do, how do we know that they knew about it? I mean, this as, as if I was a naysayer, right? Okay. Unbelievable. How could they let this happen? Yeah. So they basically have had the information since the early 1990s. Um, there was a study back in 1990 in The Lancet um, where they found that preterm babies fed the for fed formula were six to, six to 10 times more likely to develop NEC. Jeez. And that is, um, I have provided the link to that study, so that will, will be available. Um, and this is now we're like 30 years later. Um, there have, and we're still promoting it. They're still pushing it. In fact, they're feeding it to babies in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was one case that I had heard about where a baby was being breastfed by the mother. She was sleeping at one point. Um, one of the nurses gives the baby formula. Bam. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And so that one actually was not only the case would not only be against the manufacturer yeah. of the product, but also the hospital. That is absolutely off. I can't even imagine from the position of the mother, right? Like you're doing literally everything you can. You just gave birth and you're still you're still out here. Oh, baby's hungry. OK, bring him over. You know, you're making yeah. the sacrifices and you fall asleep for just, you know, take a little nap and that happens. Jeez. Yeah. Well, and here's the scary thing, too, is that these companies, I mean, they're telling the hospitals that it's perfectly safe. And these nurses and some of the doctors, they don't know. That's th their their standard of care is to provide is of to course. feed them this this formula. Yeah. And the other thing about it, that one of the other reasons that they fill, feed them this formula is that the companies provide the formula, the hospitals for free or at significant discounts. And you know why they do that? They do that because whatever your baby is fed in the hospital, that's what you're going to feed them when you yep. get home. So you're going to get this brand loyalty. Oh, okay. Well, the hospital gave them Similac. That much must be the best stuff. That's what I'm going to buy. And now they're going to buy their product until the baby's off the formula. And that's such a good point too, because I would think that exact same thing. It, oh, the hospital is giving it to it. This has to be the best option. Absolutely. Possible. But realistically, that's not the case at all, right? Because it's the cheapest option that's still, you know, reasonably are healthy to their best of best of their knowledge. Right. Well, and they're promoting it as being perfectly safe. Yeah. 
do want to thank everyone for tuning in this week, hanging out with us. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to us. 10K subscribers, absolutely fantastic. Woo-hoo. You know, the only thing I want to see is a little bit more questions. We'd love, we'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to hear, um, you know, either personal stories or uh, thoughts or just, you know, uh, curiosities around the area because I think there's a lot of stuff that I'm learning every show and um, I'm sure there's a lot of questions when you're when you're tuning in um, and if it's something that you don't want to post in the comments whether that's on Facebook TikTok YouTube whatever it is you can also email us podcast at showeredlaw.com uh, obviously that is completely con- confidential and anonymous and if it's something that you want us to talk about or share on the podcast let us know and we will be more than happy to go over it Um, But with that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic week and we will see you next week. Same time, same day. Prioritizing profits. Prioritizing profits. Dangerous drug and product cases.